Grace and peace to you from God, our Creator, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, and welcome to Online Worship with Orange Beach Presbyterian Church. My name is Kim. I'm the pastor here. And what a joy it is that we are gathered together for worship today. Quick announcement uh, to share a couple of quick announcements. Uh, First is a week from today is a communion Sunday. We will celebrate the Lord's Supper. If you are an online worshiper and you will be worshiping with us next Sunday online, um, be sure to have some bread or crackers and a cup of juice or wine uh, ready for the elements so that we can all share in the Lord's Supper together. If you're watching as a a household with multiple people, be sure to have enough for everybody uh, so that you can serve one another. Uh, The next announcement is um, about the food pantry. Just a big thank you to all of our volunteers this week. We did get in a truck from Feeding the Gulf Coast. It was 1,200 pounds of food um, unloaded quickly and cheerfully by a few volunteers, unpacked and organized by a few more volunteers. Uh, so we are we have restocked our food pantry in terms of canned goods and dry goods. Uh, we are still continuing to pick up meat, produce, and baked goods from Publix three times a week. So um, with the availability of this food, we are serving more and more and more people. Our client list is growing and we couldn't be happier about it. We stay steady the whole time that we're open. Uh, Just a reminder, we are open three days a week, Mondays and Tuesdays from 10 to 12, Thursdays from 10 to 3. Uh, So if this is something that you would like to be more involved in, if you would like to volunteer for, um, you know, any of the work that needs to be done, please just let us know. Uh, You don't have to be a member of the church to be a volunteer. So if you you have a neighbor who really has a heart for food ministries and they're not plugged into something else, plug them into us. Give them our our number, tell them about us, and let us, um, we'll get them on our volunteer list uh, so that our volunteer list will continue to grow along with our client list. Um, But just a huge thank you to everybody who is making that possible. Also, one last request, if you are local, if you have any of those plastic grocery bags, um, if, if, you know, if you're like me, you have a bag of bags somewhere in your house where you, you just stick all those bags when you forget to bring your fabric bags. So if you have any of those and you would like to recycle them, please bring them on into the church. We would love to be able to reuse them. We are constantly uh, running out of or low on gro- those grocery bags for our clients. So those are our food pantry needs. Those are our announcements. And now we are ready to begin worship. All the words that you'll need today will appear on your screen as you need them so that you can participate in worship fully uh, right along with us. And we will begin, of course, with our call to worship. God's love is poured out on the world. From the foundations of time, God's love is woven into all things. When we cry out, God hears and lovingly responds to us. Thanks be to God who forgives and lifts us up. Now we are called to be born anew. Open our hearts and our lives that we may truly be born with hearts aflame with God's love. Amen.
Let's now go into a time of confession. First we'll pray silently, and then we'll pray together in the prayer found on your screen. Let us pray. And let us pray together. Lord, we are such stubborn people. We want to know all the answers. We find it hard to place our trust even in your Son. When Jesus proclaims that we can have a new life, we want to know how this is possible. How can we get rid of the old burdens and difficulties and start over again? Wouldn't it be just like climbing back into the womb to make a fresh start? how we have misunderstood what Jesus has said. New life is possible. We can place our trust in God's healing care. Forgive us and help us, gracious Lord, for we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. May the God of mercy, who forgives you all your sin, strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Before we hear God's written word, let's turn to God in prayer. Gracious God, we are so thankful for this time together, this time of worship, where we might not be in the same room, but we are worshiping the same God, the one true God, where we can gather together with our siblings in Christ all over the world to sing praises to you to pray to you, to hear your word. So God, we pray that you will fill us all with your Holy Spirit, each and every one of us, opening our ears, our hearts, and our minds, so that we'll hear your written word, and in it we'll hear your voice. We pray this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, as together we pray how he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture lesson this morning is from the book of John, chapter 3, verses 1 through 17. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the miraculous signs you are doing if God were not with him. In reply, Jesus declared, I tell you the truth, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. How can one be born when they are old? Nicodemus asked. Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, I tell you the truth, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. How can this be? Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus, and do you not understand these things? I tell you the truth. We speak of what we know, and we testify to what we have seen, but still you people do not accept our testimony. 
I have spoken to you of earthly things, and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Last week, we celebrated Pentecost, 50 days after Easter, the gift of the Holy Spirit blowing in like a mighty rushing wind, lighting tongues of fire on people, growing the congregation, perhaps even giving birth to church. It's an exciting day. Today is known as Trinity Sunday. It's a Sunday where we acknowledge that the gift of the Holy Spirit has been received. And so we talk about uh, God in three persons, God the Creator, the Father, the Mother, the Parent, God the Son, Jesus Christ, and God the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, the wind, the breath, the comforter. Now that we have uh, an understanding, or at least uh, perhaps a glimpse of all three, we celebrate the Trinity as God in God as one, three in one and one in three. But what does all of that mean 
Exactly. Well, the scripture passage given on this Trinity Sunday by the lectionary is John 3, 1 through 17. 17 verses, um, it's not a huge passage, but there's so much in here. In fact, there's so much in here, we really just looked at a piece of this passage just a few months ago during Lent. We talked about Nicodemus. How can we look at it again so soon when it was pointed out to me that we just did this in March? I had to double check to make sure that I was right, that I was looking at the right calendar, that I was actually following the right lectionary. But here we are again, looking at this important passage, the third chapter of John. Perhaps one of the more famous verses, or at least more well-known verses, is John 3.16, uh, that you just heard as part of this, toward the end of the passage. For God so loved the world, God gave his one and only Son. Whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. A lot of people cling to that because it seems to sum up the gospel so well in just that one verse. God loves us so much. That's why God sent Jesus Christ to be our Savior. But let's really take a look at this whole passage because, again, there's so much to see in here. We'll start with Nicodemus. Nicodemus, who was one of the Pharisees. He was one of the religious leaders of the day. And he came to Jesus at night. Many people speculate he came at night so that he wouldn't be seen. Honestly, that may have been the only time he really had a chance to go see Jesus without crowds, without disciples, without people. He wanted perhaps a one-on-one -on -one with him. Maybe there was a little bit of, um, I don't want to be seen with him. Jesus was just coming from overturning the tables in the temple. He came into the temple. He saw the corruption that was going on. He saw the poor being taken advantage of in God's name. And he was mad about it. And he tore apart the temple. He overturned the tables. He threw out the money changers. No wonder Nicodemus felt like he had to come to him at night. I'm wondering if perhaps in the aftermath of this clearing of the temple, I wonder if Nicodemus, too, was troubled by the money changers, was bothered by the corruption in the church. And when he saw Jesus taking a stand against it, I wonder if that was when he said, I need to talk to this guy. I need to know this guy better. There are, it's oftentimes that you hear somebody say, like there was one, one time that they really said, you know what, I want to know Jesus better. I want to get into church or go back to church. <coughs> Excuse me. This could have been Nicodemus's turning point. Again, we don't, we're not given a lot of information. We're not really 100% sure. But we do know that he came to Jesus at night, um, f at first with knowledge, and then he's got some questions. He starts by saying, calling Jesus rabbi. We know that you're a teacher. And he says, we, not just I, we. We know that you're a teacher who's come from God. That's a great place to start with Jesus, right? I know who you are. I acknowledge that you are the Son of God. He says, no one could perform the miraculous signs you're doing if God were not with you. He knows what Jesus has done. Jesus' reputation has preceded him. They've heard about these miracles. They've heard who he is. Nicodemus might be the only one they're talking to him, but he uses the we. People have been talking. They know who Jesus is. And I don't know if he thought, you know, that would get him immediately into his good graces, if he just, you know, blurted it out because he felt like he had to, he had to say in his presence, he had to acknowledge who he was. But Jesus answers with, I tell you the truth. No one can see the kingdom of God unless they're born again. Oh, I love this about Jesus. You come to Jesus with some declarations. You're, you're, you're sure you know what's going on. And you do, and you're right. But Jesus still wants to stretch you and grow you and make you understand more and be closer to him. He doesn't just say, yep, that's me, son of God, excellent. Good observation, Nicodemus. He challenges him 
to go a little bit further. Jesus, I know that you're the son of God. Well, Nicodemus, let me tell you something. No one can see the kingdom of God unless they're born again. We are relatively familiar with that phrase, born again. It's, it's used, um, it's been used now for um, you know, decades and decades. It often signifies um, in some denominations, you, there's a point in time where you uh, accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and at that point, you're born again. Um, Presbyterians are, believe that we are saved from the very foundation of the earth. Um, that there is not a point in time where we can choose to either accept or reject our salvation. So when we say born again, um, it, it's not quite the same as, as other people, but we're at least familiar with that phrase. I'm a born again Christian. But what does this really mean? I mean, Nicodemus is right to question it. He's never heard this phrase before. You have to be born again. He doesn't know the phrase born again Christian because they don't exist at this time. So Nicodemus questions it. How can you be born again? Like he's thinking of birth, an actual physical birth, perhaps. Or maybe he's just so confused. He poses something that's absolutely ridiculous because he thinks the statement is ridiculous. You can't be born a second time. I can't go back into my mother's womb and be reborn. And Jesus has an answer for that too. I tell you the truth, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they're born of water and the spirit. So yes, flesh gives birth to flesh. People give birth to people. Adults give birth to babies. But the spirit, the Holy Spirit, gives birth to spirit. So you can be physically born as a human being with a body, but you can also find a fresh new beginning, a new birth from the Holy Spirit. You can do new things with God. The wind blows wherever it pleases, Jesus continues. You can hear it sound, but you don't know where it's coming from. You don't know where it's going. Wind is unpredictable. We all know this. There have all been times where we've been caught by a gust of wind. It blows something out of our hands, or uh, we're not expecting maybe quite so much wind, and it does a little bit of damage. We've had some storms come through recently, not nearly as bad as storms in other areas. But even in this area, we've had some pretty stout winds at night. It's a little bit scary because wind is somewhat unpredictable, even meteorologists don't know exactly where one wind might blow from one second to the next. So this is what Jesus is getting at here. The wind blows wherever it pleases. It's the same thing with the Spirit. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. You don't necessarily know where God is going to take you, but you have to be ready for whatever direction. Nicodemus still doesn't understand it. And I'm with Nicodemus. This is complicated stuff. We have been studying this for 2,000 years. Scholars have dug deep. Bible studies have been written about this. And it's still heavy stuff. It's still confusing. It's still hard to explain, hard to grasp. How can this be, he asked. And Jesus says, you're Israel's teacher. You are one of the Pharisees. You're a member of the Jewish ruling council. How do you not understand? I tell you the truth. We speak of what we know. We testify to what we've seen. But you still don't accept our testimony. I've talked to you about earthly things. And you don't believe. How will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? Okay, look, I've, to I've talked about what's happening right in front of your face. Okay, right? I've, I've fed the hungry. I've healed the sick. I've overturned the temple and driven out the corrupt money changers. Who were cheating the poor. These are the things that you've witnessed me do, and you come to me with questions. You've seen God at work, and you still have questions. How are you going to understand if I talk about heavenly things, things that you can't see, things that you don't know of, things that you haven't experienced? That's a really good point, isn't it? It's, sometimes it's hard to believe even what we see, especially these days with 
AI happening and uh, deep fakes and you know you can you can manipulate images and videos and people you can make it look like one person is talking when it's just all fake you can release photos and people will take a look and, and can determine that they've been manipulated in some way. Things have been added or taken away or it's, some of them are even just completely, totally made up. How do you believe even what you're seeing, much less things that you can't see? How do we believe in Jesus Christ when we can't? come to him at night and sit down face to face when he doesn't have a body that we can reach out and touch when he doesn't have a voice where we can see his mouth moving and hear his words with our ears how do we believe unless we're born again unless things change and here's the good news god is always doing a new thing new things are sprouting up right and left god is never done working god is never done working with you never done working with me never done working in the world and we have to sometimes take a fresh look at that and in order to really truly understand what jesus is getting at we have to take a look at what he's telling us here you have to be born again. No one can see the kingdom of God unless they're born again. Unless we're different, unless we've changed, unless something new is happening. And God is always doing something new. If we allow ourselves to be guided by God, if we are open to doing new things, if we are continually listening for the direction God wants us to take, Imagine what exciting things lie in front of us. No one can see the kingdom of God unless they're born again. We have to put aside the old. We have to put aside what's holding us back, what's holding us down. And we have to be open to doing new things. Because God is doing new things. The Spirit is giving birth to the Spirit. When the gift of the Holy Spirit blew in as, as they were gathered, as they were all speaking in different languages and yet understanding each other, as they were worshiping together so passionately and so loudly that people outside were hearing it and thinking they'd been drinking, that is the gift of the Holy Spirit. If we lean into that, if we accept that the Holy Spirit is at work in the world around us and in us, Things are different. Things will change. Things will be new. We're not who we used to be. And perhaps we're not even who we will be. God is always at work. And it's kind of comforting that we're not who we used to be, isn't it? <laughs> As I get older, I, I find myself sort of wistfully looking back and we get this nostalgia. It's like when you um, have a bad breakup and then you kind of look back and you only really remember the good parts as you, as you kind of think, oh, I miss that person. You don't remember the bad parts. You like to remember the good parts. So I look back and I think, oh, it was so great when, when I was here or when I was there. But when you look back at how we used to be or if we look back at who we were before, we really grew into who God wants us to be. We can really say, you know what? So, you know, that was a good time of my life, or that was great, or I really loved this, but I'm so glad I am where I am now. I'm so glad that God has been at work in my life to change me, to grow me. You know, we go to God with questions. We, we pray, and it's always... We're always working to be better, to do better, to be more, to be the person that God wants us to be. You know, there's that image from Scripture where God is the potter and we're the clay. The wheel is always turning. God is always working on us. And that's what's so amazing. You know, it's hard to understand the Trinity, the three and one and one and three. How is God one but God is three and all three are God? It's, it is very confusing. But like the potter 
as God is crafting us, we are God's masterpiece. Perfectly and beautifully and wonderfully made. And yet, he still continues to work on us. We are still becoming his masterpiece, even as we are God's masterpiece now. I know, confusing. We often like to look at the past. We often like to guess at what the future will be or reach or plan for the future. We know we we can't really plan super solidly because we don't know what the world will bring us from day to day, much less year to year. So live in today, knowing that we are a work in progress, knowing that God is still working on us, crafting us, forming us, leading us, growing us, if we are just open to that possibility of change, of rebirth, of doing something new, of recreating who we are, knowing whose we are, finding new things, being new people, is something that keeps us flexible and pliable so that God can lay out a path for us and we can follow it and we can be on that path and we can know that we're going in the right direction, a good direction, a godly direction. Perhaps being born again is more than just a phrase used in some denominations. Perhaps being born again is just being open to the possibilities that God has laid out for us. Being born again means being willing to say, you know what, hey, I was wrong about this. I see that now. And I'm willing to make amends, to change, to be better. Maybe it just means I never really understood that before. I've never experienced that before. I've never done this before. But I'm going where God calls me to go. And so this is a new chapter in my life, a new me, a new mission, a new ministry, a new friendship, relationship. (coughs) Excuse me. New things can be scary, of course, but they can also be exhilarating. And if we are on the path where God wants us to be, if we are listening to God, if we are going to Jesus... (coughs) Excuse me. We are going to Jesus in the middle of the night with these questions. We have to be ready to hear some answers that challenge us and stretch us and make us grow. We have to be ready to make changes so that we can be the people that God calls us to be. We have to be ready to be born again into a new creation, God's creation. Amen. And let us now pray for and with one another. Let us pray. God of grace and mercy, we have so many joys in our lives, so many times that we are smiling and laughing and celebrating, times that we are with our friends and with our family and making new friends, and we catch glimpses of you in the eyes of those people We see you in them, and hopefully they see you in us as well. We catch glimpses of you in creation all around us, in the beautiful weather, in the hot sun, in the blue skies. And you are with us. You are celebrating with us. You are laughing with us. You're on the beach with us and at cookouts with us as we celebrate a holiday weekend. But God, we also have sorrows. We remember why this weekend is a holiday. We remember the people who gave their lives in service to this country. And even though we long for the kingdom of God to finally be realized, we understand that there is, there are nations that we defend including our own. There are nations that we fight for, including our own. And so we do give thanks for the people who gave their lives. 
We do remember and honor their deaths, especially on this weekend. We remember the families that they left behind, the spouses, the children, the parents, the people who are still grieving. This weekend means more to them than a trip to the beach or a family cookout. So help us keep that foremost in our minds as we lift up those people who are grieving. And even, even though today is set aside to remember those who died in service, let's not forget the other prayers that we have, the other concerns, people who are sick, people who are grieving, people who are struggling in myriad ways. Help us minister to them. Put people in our path who might need a comforting word or a listening ear or whatever their need is. Give us the things to say, the things to do that we might show your glory. So we pray today for all of those people who need you, whether they know they need you or not. We pray that they will feel and know your presence. We pray that they will stretch and grow and be born again. And we pray that for ourselves as well. Lord, if there is room for us to grow, help us grow. If we feel some growing pains, accompany us on the journey that we might be comforted. We pray all of this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. This concludes our worship service. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll be back again next week. A reminder again, next week is a communion week, so be sure to have your um, bread and juice ready for next week's um, communion. But for now, it's time to finish worshiping together and start worshiping in the world. It's time to turn this church inside out to spread the love of God far and wide. Be excited to do this, for as we part ways, we go with God the Creator, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Children of the Lord said, Amen. Amen.